this episode of Coding Secrets, I'm going to explain how the Moose Chase section in Mickey Mania was achieved. As far as I'm aware, this is the first ever example of an into the screen chase section in a video game. So this is how it was achieved. First of all, let's break it down into its separate elements. Let's get rid of all the sprites, strip away the trees and remove the scrolling floor. So this is what we call the parallax layer and in most games it's used to fill in the background to give a sense of depth. Adding the trees back in we can see they add a great sense of movement but if we slow them down we can see that it's a repeating animation. And as usual we've cheated by mirroring it to fill more of the screen. But if we isolate it we can see that it is actually quite a small 16 framed animation. So that's the background and the trees but what about the Mode 7 style 3D floor? How does it achieve that at 60 frames a second? Well, believe it or not, it actually starts life as this. Let's remove everything again and take a closer look. OK, so that's just a non-animating stripey pattern. How does that become a 3D floor? If we zoom in, we can see it's a repeating pattern of 15 colours. Including the background makes 16 and that's the size of one colour palette. If we set the first colour in the palette to white and the rest to black, we would get this. If we set just the second colour to white, and then just the third colour, and so on, we get to control every pixel in that repeating pattern individually. Let's zoom out and see what that looks like. Because the base pattern we used is distorted to look like it's wrapped around a cylinder, all our colour changes follow the same pattern. Remember, all we're doing here is changing one colour palette. We can make it purple and go the other way. And we can change more than one colour at a time in the palette so we have complete control of what texture we repeat across the screen. So what happens if we wait for a certain line of the screen to be drawn and change the palette after that? Well then we can control the two halves separately. And we can do this at many other positions down the screen as well. So if we go back to our floor effect, we know that we can change the 15 colours in our palette to anything we want, so we can draw a one pixel high slice of floor. And of course we know our stripey pattern repeats it across the screen, so we get a whole line. And then, if we change the palette on every line, we can pick a new set of colours for each line allowing us to build a textured floor using just palette swaps. Then finally, we can scroll through these palettes to give a sense of movement. Again, it's worth repeating that the distorted pattern we started with is what is making it all look 3D. We could change that stripey pattern into any twists and turns we liked, and it would all still move smoothly. The first time I saw the effect being used was with seven colours on an Amiga. Here's an example, and another, and yet another. In fact, these are all in just one Amiga demo. I first used the effect for the high score entry on my Amiga game Leander, and then used a much improved version here on Pugsy. So that's the secret behind the 3D floor which makes the Moose Chase section look so good on 16-bit Sega hardware. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like or even subscribe and until next time, thanks for watching.